Today I'm going to share some very important information about zinc. And the reason I'm talking about zinc is that zinc is involved in so many different things. It's involved in 300 different enzymes and over a thousand different factors related to your DNA. Its functions are very wide in helping certain enzymes, not just for digestion, but for a lot of other things. And if you can identify early signs of a zinc deficiency, sometimes they call it a subclinical deficiency, then you can prevent advanced problems related to zinc. And that could include a complete loss of appetite, and then you end up having anorexia, necrosis because the tissue is not healing. And so zinc actually helps with wound healing. And if you're deficient in zinc, you can develop uh, ulcers externally or internally on your body, even ulcers in your mouth. And even some elderly that have these ulcers because they're in this bed and they're unhealing uh, ulcers or, or wounds, um, they need zinc big time. Another advanced problem with zinc is hypogonadism, where your testicles actually atrophy or shrink. So you're obviously going to have low testosterone. That could be an advanced zinc deficiency. And I'm going to put all this research down below in the description. Another interesting advanced problem would be thymus atrophy. The thymus gland is on top of the heart, and that has a huge influence of making certain T cells that are involved with the immune system. It's like a training camp for your immune system. And if you have atrophy of the thymus gland, can you imagine what's going to happen to your immune system? You're not going to have an immune system. Then we have uh, the adrenal hormone called cortisol. Your cortisol can greatly go up if you're deficient in zinc, which could be the reason why it affects the thymus, the immune system, because when you have high cortisol, that can paralyze the immune system in the white blood cell. You also have muscle loss because of the involvement with zinc. In fact, one of the best sources of zinc is in animal meat, because we need that zinc in our muscles to create antioxidants to counter all the oxidative damage that occurs, especially with exercise. So if you can identify early signs of a zinc deficiency, you can head off or prevent bigger problems. And I wanted to show you one of my favorite books. It's called The Technology of War by Sun Tzu. You probably heard of The Art of War, right? But this book is a lot different. If you take a look at some of the um, the books on Art of War, there's like 45 different versions. A lot of them are altered from the original translation. This book is an exact duplication of the original text that Sun Tzu wrote in Chinese. And this section is talking about uh, supreme skill is not 100 victories in 100 battles. Supreme skill is subduing the enemy's operations and its forces without battle. And if we can relate this to this topic on your body, which I do all the time, you don't want to wait until you have an advanced disease before you do something about it. If you understand the early signs or the symptoms of something, you can easily prevent it because you have the knowledge. And so that way, understanding your body's early signs for something is extremely valuable. And I have a lot of videos on that. So let's talk about the most common early sign of a zinc deficiency. Well, first of all, you have to have the intelligence or understanding of where zinc tends to affect certain organs more than others. And it just so happens that the organ that is most affected by a zinc deficiency is the pancreas, okay? Now, there's two parts of the pancreas. You have one that controls your blood sugars, which has to do with insulin, which zinc has a lot to do with. But also the other part is called the exocrine part of the gland, which has to do with enzymes, okay? And so this is the symptom. Are you ready for this? Foul-smelling stool that floats. Yeah, that's right. You might have some cramping. You might have a little diarrhea. You might have abdominal pain. You might even have bloating, okay? But this is a, a very easy thing to identify. And yes, it could come from other things too. It could come from what you just ate, but it can also come from a zinc deficiency. And just as a side note, I did another video about this, I think four years ago. And there is another common first symptom, which is shortness of breath upon exertion, which is another indicator which is good to know because sometimes people think, well, I'm just out of shape. Well, it could be a zinc deficiency. So we need to look at the diet. Are you eating enough zinc? Or maybe it's coming from what's called gut malabsorption. Maybe you have inflammation in your gut. Uh, that's a big cause of a zinc deficiency. Another cause of a zinc deficiency is consuming something with something called phytates, okay, or phytic acid, which is in grains. If you are a cereal eater, if you eat a lot of refined carbs, you're going to get phytoacid, and that is going to 
potentially create a zinc deficiency. There's millions of children that have a zinc deficiency around the world that uh, are consuming a lot of cereal. They don't consume a lot of meats, especially red meat. And then they end up with this diarrhea, which is very, very dangerous. And out of all the foods that are the highest in zinc, it's oysters. Okay, and then you have crab, other shellfish, meats, fish, and then you might have some zinc in cashews and peanuts. But you want to just look at the whole situation to see, could this situation be coming from my diet? Is it coming from something that I'm eating that's creating this deficiency? Because also sugar or even being a diabetic can create a deficiency. Too much stress can create a deficiency in zinc. Or let's say, for example, you drink alcohol on a regular basis, that could create a zinc deficiency. Okay, having an infection can create a deficiency of zinc. So I think it's very important to use principles like this to be able to predict. And to be able to predict, you have to have the right information. You have to have all of the information to be able to understand the consequences or the early signs of something that can lead into something bigger. Because typically, what would you do if you have a symptom like a digestive issue? You might go to the doctor. He gives you a pill. It masks the symptom. Your symptom is better. The problem is still there. And then it kind of goes downhill from there. And just to give you a little more intel or information on zinc, zinc is very much involved with your sleep cycles. If you have sleep problems, let's say you don't get enough of the last part of your sleep, zinc could be something you might want to take right before bed. Zinc is also heavily involved in a part of your brain called the hippocampus, which is kind of like the relay um, part for memory and learning and cognitive function. Zinc is also, like I said before, involved with insulin, okay? If you don't have enough zinc, it can put you at risk for becoming a diabetic. Zinc is also involved in making neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine, which can affect your mood. And zinc also makes up a very important group of antioxidants uh, involved with your brain, your heart, and your muscles. The three parts of your body that use a lot of oxygen. And if we look a little bit deeper, um, zinc helps with this oxidative stress that's involved with your mitochondria, the energy factory of all these tissues. So I want you to start looking at these symptoms a little bit differently. Instead of just jumping and treating them, try to understand what your body is telling you. Realize that a lot of these problems could be related to a nutritional deficiency that could be related to your diet and use these indicators or little red flags as something that you can have advanced knowledge or prediction to then prevent something. But unfortunately, this idea of prevention, you can't really talk too much about it because even like on the bottles of different nutrients, you'll see there's a mandatory label. It says, this product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. So it's illegal to even prevent a disease. So what I try to do in my videos is to give you the knowledge of what you could end up with. So then that way, you don't have to end up with a situation you're battling it, which is a lot more work. It is so much easier to win the war by doing something like this than going into battle with a health condition. Now, if you haven't seen my recent video on the, the dark side of zinc, I put it up right here. Check it out.